So this video is going to focus on rebuilding the 6P148A compressor that is typically found on 84 through 93 Ford Mustangs. Now this compressor is found on a lot of other vehicles as well, especially Fords. Um, I think there's some Porsches that have it, um, but there's, there's a number of vehicles that use that with different clutches on it, different manifolds, and really the main difference is maybe this body might have different mounting ears. For the most part, this is going to cover um, that entire 6P148 family of compressor. Now, a lot of these, uh, we'll call them 84 to 93 Mustangs, uh, have had the refrigerant leak out of them over the years. And one of the most common spots for it to leak is the shaft seal, which is down behind the clutch here. If you were to take a, a refrigerant sniffer and put it in this particular position here, you usually always get a whiff of refrigerant, even on brand new remanufactured or rebuilt compressors. Um, well, at least typically the ones that I've worked on, I've always found a leak down at the shaft seal. Um, so I'm gonna go into how to replace that as well as to do a general rebuild. Now there's typically three O-rings in here. One between the front cover and the main body there. Another one between the two body halves and one at the rear. Um, there's also O-rings under the manifolds here. Uh, and there's also the shaft seal, which we talked about. So really these compressors are not that difficult to take apart. And the kits are relatively available right now, although the manufacturers who are stocking them seem to change. So I'm going to break this video probably up into two parts. Um, the first part, I'm going to focus on removing the clutch and disassembling and inspecting the entire compressor. Um, from at that point, most of you might be able to figure out how to reassemble it with the new O-rings. But if not, I'm going to do a second part where I'm going to show rebuilding the compressor with new parts. If you search, there is another video on how to replace the shaft seal for this family. But I'm also going to show it um, on this particular one, probably in part two. So here are your rebuild kits. Um, so this one is by Santec. Part number is MT2140. If you search that, you'll find uh, various companies that stock this. Arizona Air is the one that I purchased this from. And it'll come with your three main body O-rings as well as your seals for your front and rear cover. These are the O-rings, there should be four of them, yep, down here, that um, go under the manifolds. And then these brass rings here, brass washers, are what go under the six bolts that go around and hold the compressor together. These are one-time use only, so when you remove the bolts, those washers are going to discard. Now this is your front seal. This is a GPD-131162. I found the best place to purchase this, the cheapest, was Rock Auto, but there's a number of vendors that sell that, or a similar kit. This is a brand new shaft seal with the O-ring. So these are, it's two parts for your shaft seal. And this kit does come with more washers as well, so you're going to have extras. And I believe the C-clip here is for the AC clutch. I haven't identified the O-ring yet, but I'll, I guess I'll come to that when I work through this kit. I used a different kit on previous rebuilds, but that kit is no longer available. So this is my first time using the GPD kit. So step one is removal of the clutch. Now there's plenty of write-ups, explanations on how to remove the clutch. Basically you have a 12 millimeter nut here, and you want to hold this outer disc. They make a tool that fits into these holes. But if you have an impact gun, you can just hold this with your hand and just take that nut off. It's pretty easy to do. When you go to retighten it, however, you will want something to hold this better than just manhandling it. You can simply try that, but I recommend getting the tool for that. So to remove the outer hub, um, what you'll see here, you'll notice that this is threaded here. You'll need a puller. Um, these rarely come off on their own. Now, you can typically rent these at your local auto parts store. And this is upside down, but this is the OEM Tools 27150 from good old AutoZone. And this contains pretty much everything you need here. Um, the puller that you're going to use is actually this one. It has two ends on it. And you're going to use the coarse uh, end of this tool. Uh, really, you just thread that into the, you back this piece out here. You thread it down into that and then you, while holding it with the wrench, simply turn this portion and that'll push this off. And you'll see here that this is threaded into the hub. Now you'll want to take a wire brush and carefully clear those threads to get any grease out because you want this to easily thread down far enough. Uh, you don't want to not go far enough or follow the threads because then you'll never be able to pull this off. 
And that's it. So you can simply thread this down and this whole top plate should come off. So next you're going to want to come in here with a set of snap ring pliers and remove this snap ring here. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, but that, at that point, this pulley should pull off just like that. Now, a little tricky to see, but down in there is another snap ring. You're going to remove that snap ring and pull this clutch off the, off the unit. So you're going to want to remove the snap ring. I did this off camera because my snap ring pliers are terrible. And then this electromagnet unit pretty much pulls off. And that's it. So that is stripping the clutch off and you're ready to begin disassembly. Now before I go into disassembling this, I'm going to go into detail on some of the tools that are used for this. Now most of them I think are optional. There's really only one tool that I think is absolutely necessary. And that is the tool to remove the key from the shaft here. Uh, it's a little difficult to do that without the tool. But all the other tools are somewhat optional, but I'm going to go through the list of what those tools are. One important thing to note is that there's typically a shim that's installed that spaces the outer clutch um, hub assembly from the pulley. You're going to want to make sure that you save that spacer, especially if you're reusing your clutch. Now, if you're putting an all brand new one on there, you're going to need to purchase a shim kit, which is available, because you're going to need to measure that gap. It may not be the same than the shim that's on the current clutch for your compressor. So here's a look at some of the tools that you may or may not need during the assembly. Uh, but before I go into that, I'm going to put a link in the description of a good PDF service document for this compressor. Uh, but it lists step-by-step step things like how to pull the clutch off, as well as disassembly, uh, exploded view, the various parts, uh, etc. It also has part numbers for these tools. Uh, but for the most part, really quickly, this tool here is used to hold the compressor. Uh, with these three bolts, you basically encircle it, clamp it in this, and you can put this into a vise to hold that. Now, I tried to use this. I found it was much easier just to do the compressor on a bench top. So you, so you may or may not even want this tool. Um, these tools are the seal driver, and you may again, you may not need this particular tool because you can substitute for a socket that happens to be the correct diameter. <clears throat> this is the seal installer. Now this one might be optional. This is your shaft seal, and you'll notice it has a little bit of a lip around here. This driver fits perfectly on that lip and holds it in place while you drive it. So this is kind of an optional tool here. This pulls your valve plates off. Um, somewhat optional because I didn't. I found I did not need it. You use this to kind of hook your valve plate and pull it out of the uh, front cover and rear cover of the housing. Uh, but the one tool that I do think that you will want to get is your key puller. Uh, this is to pull the keyway out of the shaft before you pull the front cover off. Um, I was unable to find any other way to do it other than purchasing this tool. I'll come in close, see if I can get the part number here. See if I can get to zoom. Um, so it looks like this is a T81P19623-NH. Now the part number for these tools will be in the PDF document that'll be linked. Um, so if you decide you want any of these, that'll be in the document. But the one I recommend the most is you get this tool. And you may want to get this tool optionally. Uh, you can find these on eBay if you search the part numbers that are, that are in the PDF document. Uh, they're not hard to find. They're available. They sell for, I think these are around 20 bucks a piece. Um, the downside is once you buy it, I highly doubt you're going to be able to resell it. So you're pretty much buying it to own it. I got all these tools in a lot together. Uh, and but really, I only ended up using this tool and this tool. Um, I did use this one, but like I said, I had a socket that was pretty much the same size. Uh, but I'm going to sh demonstrate using this tool. This will be the first thing that we do here. So what you're going to do here, this basically has a slot. Um, it, you're going to slip this over the keyway pass it down and then rotate it around. There's a bit of a gap behind there. You're basically going to get from the backside and then screw this in and that'll essentially push this uh, key off. So like I said, we're going to feed this in, rotate it around until you can engage it and then spin it 
and then simply thread this in. This will spin until you contact it, and then you kind of just keep working it. It'll eventually push this key off, and that's that. So the keyway has been pulled out, no longer present. Let's see if we can shake that out, and there it is. So with that done, your next task is to remove these two manifolds. So on this particular compressor, this happened to be a six millimeter metric wrench. But the manifolds come off pretty easily. There's gonna be a lot of oil residue, etc. cetera. Uh, you'll notice these O-rings are black. This is an original compressor that had R12 in it. Uh, these were never converted over to the green style um, O-rings that you would typically find with uh, R134A conversions. Uh, but the oil seems to be okay. It's not too sticky. Uh, you're going to want to wipe this down, clean it up. The reason why you want to take the manifolds off is you're going to split the case right down the middle, so these need to come off. Um, your next task is going to be to flip it over and remove these six screws. But I'm going to go ahead and wipe up some of this oil first before doing that, before I proceed. So once you have that all clean up, you can take a look in there. This compressor looks pretty clean inside there. You don't need to save those O-rings. Those O-rings are going to be discarded and replaced with the green style O-rings. Also, the bolts that go in here do not have uh, lock washers or crush washers under there. So you can reuse those bolts as is. Now, you're going to flip it over on the side here. And now you have six more long bolts that go into the body. Uh, these also take a six millimeter metric uh, wrench. Now, these bolts, like I pointed out with the rebuild kit, have crush washers under there. Those are going to be discarded and you're going to uh, you install the brand new ones that come with the rebuild kits. Now with the screws removed, sometimes the little crush washers come off with the bolts, but oftentimes they remain down the bores. Uh, as long as you make sure that you get them all out, um, usually the amount of grime in here will dictate if they come out or not. Uh, but then you can kind of try and work off or separate the parts. You notice there's various pry points. There's one pry point here to be able to separate it. You can use this point back here as a pry point and right here. Now, your first task really is to take this front cover off. Now, when you do that, oil is going to come out of this part. So you're going to want to make sure that you have rags ready to catch it. All right, so prying here, loosen the front cover. And you'll see this comes off really without much fuss. Um, there's some oil in there. There's one part of the shaft seal. Here's the old O-ring for R12. And then as we tip this back, you'll see that there's another part of the shaft seal here. Now, if you zoom in, if we look closer here, you can see that there's quite a bit of grime on that and the shaft is actually rusty. This is really what causes a lot of the leaks is that corrosion, rust, dirt, etc., get in there and can sometimes wreak havoc on that seal. Uh, but that can get, that can be replaced. This particular gasket that surrounds the front valve can be replaced. And if you notice, this has an F here. Let me turn this this way. The F is going to denote front. Now the back one will have an R on it, as you imagine, rear. So that kind of helps you to determine which one is the front. Because they are somewhat identical and easy to get confused, but that's something to note. Now we're going to clean this up. We're going to pop the seal out using that tool. Or you can just simply use a socket that goes in there the right size to go in there and knock it through. It's up to you how you do that. And this particular shaft seal here, I'm going to clean this up first. But you're simply going to grab it and work it off the shaft. And without too much fuss, we were able to wiggle the shaft seal off the shaft. Now, to get the shaft seal out of the front cover, this tool does come in handy. Now, if you're able to find a substitute, go right ahead. But this tool is part number, it's OTC part number T8, T81P-19623-OH. And you simply slip it in here, it bottoms on the shaft seal, and you can go ahead and drive that out and it takes it right out. It makes it really easy. I say it's optional in the sense that if you're able to have the right proper socket or something that will go in there and, and make contact with that, you can certainly drive it out using that. Uh, but this tool, again, on eBay around 20 bucks and just like that we were able to drive the old shaft seal out you see a little corrosion on it the o-ring is flattened out quite a bit um, but otherwise it's, it looks like a well-used part but that'll be replaced this whole cover will need to be cleaned up degreased etc uh, but this part is ready to go now we can begin to disassemble the rest of the main body so again this is one of the other tools 
Um, again, this is optional. You don't really need it because you are able to, you can use a finger and easily pull it up. Uh, but this is part number T81P-19623-P8. And really the way it works is you kind of just lower it in here, turn it about 90 degrees, and you're able to pop the valve, uh, the valve plate itself out. You'll have to wiggle it out. There's a couple uh, dowels here, here and here. Uh, but with a little bit of work, this will make it easy. Again, optional. I don't really think you need this tool. And here is the plate being removed. So in here you can see the pistons, one, two, three. And then the, they kind of have a swash plate in the middle. It's hard to see because I'm holding it. Uh, but as you rotate, you can kind of see how these things operate. Now the valve plate itself, like I said, there's the same on the front and rear. You do not need to disassemble this. You don't need to remove that. You don't need to remove that. This gasket will be replaced. These pins do come out. So make sure that you do not lose them. They install in the body of the compressor here and here. There's two of them. Definitely make sure those get saved. Uh, this gasket here will be replaced. So you want to peel that off. Clean this plate down. Set it aside. I typically clean it, and put it, I clean it up and put it into a Ziploc bag. That way I can store it for later. Uh, but you can continue moving down the line. We're going to remove these two pins here, work them out. So here we are taking the back cover off. You can come in here with a screwdriver and simply get in there and just do a little leverage and it pops right off. Um, again, you'll, you'll probably lose a little bit of oil here. Uh, but as you take it off, you'll see that the O-ring again is the black standard R12 O-ring. And you have another valve plate, this time marked with an R. You can remove it the same way. You have two dowels here and there. You can use a tool or you can simply just work it back and forth and remove it. And here we are removing the rear plate. Uh, it's very similar to the front, so it's it's really easy to not mix them up because you have the R and the F. Uh, but it's the same. You got your two dowels, which I've pulled out and set aside. This one I did not need any tools at all. I was able to just kind of wiggle it off by hand. Uh, but I'm going to set that aside real quick. And then as you'll see from the compressor here, there's not much to it. You have a bearing in there the three pistons, and as you spin this, the three pistons will oscillate like so. You're going to, there's still one more O-ring in here, so you do need to split these halves apart. These can be a little tricky to split. Sometimes they don't want to start, so I find that if you come in here and you start tapping it with a rubber mallet, there you go. You can see that you can kind of get it started. And then you can come in here with a screwdriver and just begin spreading it out. You may have to work around there. You don't want to kind of gouge in there like I'm about to do. You do want to kind of have it come apart naturally. Use pry points that aren't where the O-ring is going to seal because the last thing you want to do is compromise that seal. What I may actually do is just simply tap it apart like so. There you go. And that's it. So again, don't be tempted to jam the screwdriver in there because that's how you can damage the sealing surface. So I've pulled this apart. Now, if you're doing a, a typical rebuild here, this is really as far as you need to come. You can kind of clean this up, clean the oil off, clean the pistons off where you can see. Here's the O-ring that you want to remove carefully and then reinstall your new one. But you do want to clean that up. I'm going to assume that there's some dirt and, and stuff, debris that may have gotten into this compressor because it's been open. So I'm going to go a little bit further and I'm going to remove the pistons, the swash plate, and the shaft. I do... Since the shaft is a little bit corroded here, I do want to come and polish that up. Um, so I do have a reason for continuing on here. But if your compressor is in really good shape, you may want to stop here and just simply reseal, re-oil it, and put it back together. And to continue disassembling this, you're really just going to take your shaft and kind of, I know that sounds good, but wiggle that out just like so. And that's it. So these will fall apart. No, they're pretty easy to get back together. There's nothing really holding these balls together other than the oil. It's a ball bearing and a cup. So as you can see here, you can simply just remove the two cups and remove the ball bearings. And that is it. So that's your piston, two ball bearings, and two cups that ride on your swash plate here. There are bearings here. There is a washer and a thrust bearing on the on the on one side, and then the exact same thing, a thrust bearing and a washer. You'll notice the shaft here does have corrosion, so this is what I'm going to want to kind of clean up and lightly polish. Um, the 
the swash plate itself is held onto the shaft with a roll pin. There's no need to take that apart at all. These pistons do have seals. As far as I know, there are no replacements. So you want to make sure that you do not damage these. You want to make sure they're well, well lubricated. There's a gap here where they install to kind of give it a little bit of a, a freedom to move around and such. So when you go to put this back together, you want to make sure that you oil that up. But that is it. There's a couple pins in here that are pressed in to help for alignment. Those don't need to come out. Your O-ring is in this groove here. And there are bearings in here, uh, but typically those, I have not found those to go bad. Now, if you lock your compressor up, well, if you do that, this whole thing's probably toast anyway. Uh, but you may have to find pressing those out. Uh, it'll be a little bit tricky because there's not much on the backside to get to it. Uh, but the front cover and the rear cover are the same. Now from here you just want to kind of go through this, clean it all up, wipe it all down, uh, make sure it's nice and clean. And one thing to note on the front cover is that there's usually a kind of a wick or a felt that's in this area here. You want to remove that and you can remove it simply by bending up on this tab here to kind of work that out. Uh, you'll have to kind of uh, clean this area up a little bit here, but it pretty much, if you grab it, this one may take a little force, I'll have to do it off camera, but you can grab it, it goes in there, it's kind of like a weep hole for oil in the bottom, uh, but you want to remove that prior to painting it. You don't want to damage it because I have not been able to find replacements. Um, so let me take this out off camera and then I'll show you how it goes in. All right, so here it is, it's kind of a little barrel with a, a wick. Here's the hole. It was inserted like so. So I simply grabbed it with pliers and pulled it straight out. And I'm gonna set that aside. Uh, but I'm gonna assemble the housing and then I can prep it, I can clean it. Uh, you'll probably wanna tape off this particular hole there because you don't want debris to get inside. Uh, but it'll allow, me, it'll allow me to scrub this all down and give it a nice coat of paint. So I put the housing back together. So really I just reinstalled the six bolts. All of the O-rings are in place, the one, two, three O-ring here. Now I have the top ports open. I'm gonna get some rubber plugs and plug these off. If you want, you can put the manifolds back on and just plug those single ports. Uh, but you'll also need to plug this front port here as well. I'm gonna go through it, scrub all this, this dirt and grime off, um, clean it up really well, give this a new fresh coat of paint. I'll go from there. Um, but that's it. This is really all there is to the compressor. Um, you have your swash plate, your shaft, and you'll notice that my shaft here does have a little corrosion, so I'm going to want to clean that up and polish that. Um, but the pistons look to be in good shape here. Really, to clean these up, you're just going to kind of wipe the oil off, and uh, the balls, they're held in place with the lubricant, so you just need to reapply new lubricant to the balls and put the guide plates on top, and then... Hold those in place on the swash plate. Slide that whole assembly back into the piston. For the valve plates here, uh, you really this gasket gets re removed. That's part of the rebuild kit. So really, you're just cleaning the oil off. Now I disassembled this without any gloves. Uh, there's sufficient oil all over everything there. It doesn't matter at that point. But as we go back into the assembly phase, you're going to want to wear gloves. You want to handle the O-rings with gloves. Not so much the body O-rings, it's not as critical, but definitely your shaft seal. You do not want to handle that with your hands. You want to use a gloved hand and be as clean as possible. This here is your most critical seal on your shaft. If that is not as good as it could be, you're going to have a leak and all of this is for nothing. Uh, but take your time. You're going to clean off all your oil. What, what oil you reassemble with depends on what refrigerant you're using. Now my car currently has R12, so the compressor that I rebuilt for that, I used mineral oil with. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do with this, if I'm gonna rebuild this for R12, if, in case that one fails. Um, I may do this one for R134, uh, but I haven't decided, and I don't think that really needs to be decided here for this video. So whatever oil, refrigerant you plan on using, that's the oil that you're going to use. You're gonna to wanna to lightly wipe down all the parts, pre-lube them, the bearings, etc., with the oil. Um, these gaskets get reapplied with oil and all of your O-rings get uh, installed with uh, pre-lubricated with oil. Um, your shaft seal as well. Use Definitely use plenty of oil when you install that to make it easy. Um, I do have one instance where I installed the shaft seal, didn't use enough oil, and I actually tore the O-ring while I was installing that. 
Um, I kind of had a gut feeling that I did something wrong there, and so I took it out to check, and good thing I did because otherwise it would have been a huge disaster. Uh, but that's it for this video. For some of you, you can probably figure out how to reassemble this based on watching the disassembly. I am going to go ahead and put together a reassembly video once I go ahead and, and clean this up and repaint this um, compressor housing. Um, and I'm going to put that together in a part two. So thanks for watching.